Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Rebecca Burfanger, and it's Panning Month at Gals Guide. I'm joined by Leah, Bonnie, and Kim talking about our one cool thing. We've already heard about the Savvy Painter podcast and portrait painter Amy Sherald, but before we dive back in, let's get to know something random about our gal pals. So friends, what is something that you have a memory of from childhood that's a painting or an image or some kind of artwork that you still sometimes think about, or if you see it in the wild, gives you some kind of flashback? Oh, that is a good one. Is that too good? (laughs) No, 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 it's the, the it's a stunned silence. Don't it's worry. A, it's it's a the, thinker. it is yeah. a thinker. I will tell you the first one that came to my mind that way I'm buying uh, the other gals some time. <laughs> and in case I change my mind, there always is something weird about, and it, it's probably from school, the George Washington portrait, oh, like what's yeah. on the, the money. Yeah. Cause yeah. I think it was in like probably a variety of classrooms mm-hmm. that I was in. And that thing, like, is staring at you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what it is, but there's something about behind that guy's eyes. (laughs) And it's not like the cross in the Delaware one, because he's not looking at me in that one. It's like the one that's on the money uh, creeps me out. And I will also tell you, Martha Washington's portrait always freaked me out, too. I don't know what it is. Um, But that's just more of, I think, of a childlike, um, you know what I mean? Who is this person? Why is this a painting? I'm used to seeing pictures sort of thing. Um, but that's the first thing that popped into my head was going, oh, that's right. Creepy guy. <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. Our, our first president. <laughs> exactly. Creepy guy. <laughs> creepy guy. Got it. You know that creepy wet guy. <laughs> about high school is when I really started to get into like art and started reading about, you know, Vincent Van Gogh because that's where you start. And, like traumatic artists and whatever. So I always have like. I've read several books of like his letters. I'm going through like angsty teenager years. I'm like, <laughs> I would be your friend, Vincent. <laughs> Don't chop off oh. your ear from me. <laughs> I've, I've never really like let go of that. Like he's still Aww. my buddy. Did you Van go of it? Oh, uh, damn it. So I really no. should have stopped myself there. <laughs> and then when uh, college, I was sick and I couldn't sleep. And it was like two o'clock in the morning, and I had heard of this show called Doctor Who. <gasps> I hadn't watched it yet. Doctor Who in the dark. And I was like, <laughs> you know, whatever. I'm like channel surfing, and it says Vincent and the Doctor, and I'm ah. like, okay, fine, I'll give it a shot. And that was my first episode of Doctor Who, and I cried like a baby. That is a good oh, episode, wow. though, God, because it was it was like healing Van Gogh. Um, to, yeah, the, I, actually, um, did you ever notice above my daughter's desk, she has the Doctor Who Van Gogh. Yes. From the episode, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have a, oh, what do you call it? It's a picture, man, but teeny tiny picture. Mosaic. It's yeah. of, um, it's space pictures making up Starry Night. Oh, I love it. See? Adorable. Did we buy you enough time, Kim? Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, like, I always have, like, three in mind, and... They have their own story, like, um, during art appreciation in, it was either elementary or middle school, we had to do a report on an artist. Mm -hmm. Somehow I got stuck on Jackson Pollock. Ah. So the splatter painter is what I call him. Yeah, basically. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) but then it it really, um, it kind of led me to psychology a little bit because I'd try to make shapes out of it and ink blot. Um, yeah, the Warshock test, or yeah. however you actually pronounce it. Yeah, Warsh- yeah, and then just Worcestershire. 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 <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not Betty White. Warshock <laughs> test. Where's my white? Warsh- the Warshock test. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second one would be the Campbell Soup Can. Oh, Andy one, Warhol. Yeah, one of my uh, bosses had an original. His dad oh. is an artist, like some kind of crazy big artist in New York, and um, oh. they got an original. Like it's tiny, it's like a two by four or something, hmm. but it's yeah, an actual Andy Warhol oh. soup can. Third one, you'll have to help me with the artist's name. Okay, I love him to death, and yeah. I always it always escapes me. But it's the one where you're 
like everything's upside down and inside out and backwards. Escher. Escher. Yes. Yes. So any, the MCs I would of the Escher. Fill my house with all of those. <laughs> nice. Sure. I thought he was um, a rapper slash DJ for the longest time. I'm like, yes, I'm so sorry. MC. That was, it was too run DMC. It was something my cousin and I connected on. So that's why Aww. holds a little true to my heart. We're like, See? you can't do that in real life. And then so we tried to Obviously. like create those mind puzzles because we liked mind yeah. puzzles and like uh... trying to get him apart and put him back together. And we were, we mm. were fidgeters and constructors and all that stuff. <laughs> and so that's. I guess that's why we really liked it because we could never yeah. recreate any of that. See, yeah, very true. Yeah, Rebecca, what is yours? Because I'm so, thinking I know a legitimate answer, but go. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, so I was going to say the MC Escher stuff. Like I have nightmares about stairs that I can't go up or down. <laughs> Um, oh, like I can go up and I can't stairs. connect to the next like, level. It. I don't know why it's I like a recurring that. nightmare. Um, probably because I watched Labyrinth too many times or something Gosh, like that. Did that you have a hard time Labyrinth. with? Uh, Harry Potter and the moving staircases? The moving staircases, well, right, that exactly. Too, but and like Inception. Long, but it was like long before that. It was like since I was maybe eight or nine, I've had that. Like I'm in a house that's not my house. And I can't, you know, oh. but it seems like kind of close to the house I'm in. And then I can't like figure out the stairs configuration. Um, but I was going to say mine is, so I don't know. I, I doubt you'd think of this one, Leah, maybe. Um, so maybe. I had, when I was in... I think it was when I was in college, I had a roommate that had a, the Van Gogh sidewalk cafe at night, um, poster oh, yeah, yeah. in our, in our dorm room. And she was just like, yeah, when I'm having like a rough day, I like to imagine myself like sitting at that table with the, and I just Aww. pulled it up to look at it. She's like, I just like to imagine myself like in that place. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's such a cool idea. And so then when I was working my first like real job so I had a couple jobs out of college but my first job that I like actually wanted and was happy and excited and stayed for three years I had that same I bought that poster at some point I don't think I had it in college I think I got it after I was out out of school and I put it up in my cube and so when I was having like a bad day at work I would like look at that poster and I don't know if everybody I think I told a couple co-workers that and they kind of laughed and I was like no you don't understand this is my self-care before self-care right. was a term that we all know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the probably the one that I think of. But then probably anything from about that era. Like I have a, um, I have a tattoo from like the, um, whatchamacallit, like that, like the Parisian cafes. And it's not the same. It's oh. not the, it's not Le Chat Noir poster everybody knows, but it's by the same artist. And I right. saw that painting. I saw like a huge giant like wall size version at the national gallery um when i was in dc in grad school and it was one of those things that made me think that oh yeah this is such a cool thing it's like a black cat and has a red flag and that's like revolution and french and all this all these things all the things all yeah. the things that i like like all culminate in this one giant image um so i like that era and i think part of it has to do with that like, i think it kind of goes back to that college roommate who had um, and I swear I wasn't even thinking about this when I asked the question, but now I'm thinking about it. Like, oh, that kind of makes sense. But that college See? roommate that was like, oh, yeah, I really like picturing myself in the painting and just thinking about what it would be like to be there. So I think when I saw the exhibit of like the Toulouse-Lautrec and Steinlin and some of those artists mm -hmm. in, um, in that exhibit several years later, I just I liked the idea of being back in that time period and imagining myself to be like an artist or writer or something along those lines in that turn of the yeah. 20th, 19th to 20th century uh, in Paris. So that would That's be like, if I could like have yeah. a different life in a different time. Yeah. That, or, that or Zelda hits Gerald, either one would be, either right, one exactly. would be fine. <laughs> right, it'd be all good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so can I do my legit answer now? Because <laughs> it took me a minute to actually remember, and then I totally remembered what it was, except I had to look it up of exactly what it was called. Um, the first, so like the George Washington did scare me. Um, <laughs> Wait, but that that's not legit? like <laughs> no it was legit but it wasn't like you know art that inspired me or really oh, made me think about sure. art believe it or not it's from a movie surprise surprise oh, <laughs> no way <laughs> remember the scene in ferris bueller where they go to the art museum and oh, they the look George at Surratt. george Surratt? Yeah. yes 
Yeah. So it's the Sunday afternoon in the island of La Grande Jete. I had to look that up because yep. I'm like the the pointillism painting yeah. yeah. and how the scene like, you know, they're looking at the art. It's like, oh, this is funny. It's all a montage of everything awesome that they did mm-hmm. and how it goes in closer and closer and closer until it's just the dot of fuzziness sort mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. And I remember like thinking how cool that was that the art zoomed in, that the film zoomed in. Mm-hmm. Um, and stuff like that. And then I actually read later, and it's also on this Washington Post article that amazingly I pulled up, which I did not think it would be, because I knew that um, John Hughes explained why he used that particular pointillism painting. Um, A, it was the biggest one. I mean, that helps like when you're filming a movie that it's the biggest one. Um, But he actually said, quote, I always thought of this painting was sort of a little like making a movie, the pointillism style, he says. Uh, You don't have any idea of what you've made until you step back from it. The more he looks at it, meaning Ferris, there's nothing there. He fears that the more that you look at him, the less you will see. Oh. And I kind of felt that about Ferris, too. And I was just like, are they trying to like, what is the point of Ferris? Because really, Ferris is whatever you want him to be. Ferris mm-hmm. is not your hero. <laughs> no. Ferris isn't the, even the person you want to be. Like, Ferris doesn't even like himself. And I think, like, I really dug that with, like, the painting and the dots. And so, yeah. So that would be my actual answer. Ha-ha. Movie-related. Mm-hmm. Had to be. That's but a good you one. Put it all together, it's something yeah. people love. Exactly. And it's something people remember, too. Yeah. Because well, yeah. the find, dot doesn't matter, like they make did, any sense. Like, about uh, when I was in grad school, they were, like, re- like, they were restoring it. And they had this whole exhibit about mm-hmm. just that painting. And there were all these hidden things in the painting, which I don't know if he, if John, he's talked about that, but like there are people who oh, have, yeah. like there's a monkey on a leash and these people, and I have mm-hmm. actually about the t-shirt oh, yeah. version, like there's a t-shirt where it's just the monkey. And I was like, you know what? I never <laughs> even realized that was a monkey. I didn't realize, I thought it was, I guess I assumed it was a dog or a pet or something. And right, it pet, exactly. And it's their pet monkey on a leash. And I just thought that, and I, I might still have it somewhere, but it was like my favorite t-shirt. It's just like <laughs> so, the randomness. It was just so exactly so random to have this like monkey, but it was like from that exhibit and it all you know it all tied in or whatever. But um, yeah, that's really See. that's a really good one. Oh, I love it. Well, what is your funny? It's your one cool oh. thing. Yep. Oh my gosh, I know funny cool thing. Bring it on us. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so my cool thing I wanted to do on this podcast instead of your guy Friday. Because it's not really PG-13. Correct. Your is, girlfriend uh, and we try to keep very student-friendly. <laughs> and a lot of times that is sanitized for nobody's protection. Yes. So we just, if there's a racy gal or a saucy gal, we just straight don't cover her. Because, you know, yes. that's what this show's for. But now we can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I wanted to do uh, Frida Kahlo. Because most people have heard of her. Maybe just like, oh, it's the chick with the unibrow. But most people don't really know that much about her. Enlighten the people, Bonnie. Yes. Bring it. <laughs> so she was born in 1907. Later, she claims it's 1910 because it's the year of the Mexican Revolution. Uh, and she ties like everything into her Mexican identity. So, of course, revolution. she wants to be uh, born the same year as the Mexican Revolution. Makes sense. Uh, she gets polio at the age of six, which makes her um, right leg shorter and skinner, skinnier oh, than her she other leg. Limp. Oh. Yeah, so, and that's another reason why she wore those skirts, was to kind of hide her leg. Oh, interesting. I wear skirts because mm-hmm. I choose to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she originally planned to be a doctor and went to school, of uh, a prestigious school that had 2,000 students, only 35 of which were girls. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. That is a very small percentage, and it's... I can't really do math. And while she was there, she would, there was a mural painter that was hired at her school to paint murals of Diego Rivera. I was, was going to say, as soon as you said mural, and I'm like, is it Diego yeah. Rivera? <laughs> and uh, her and her buddies had this little, like, little, I don't know, angsty click. They would tease the crap out of him. She would, they would yell at him because they knew he had, like, multiple girlfriends. And they would tease him and be like, hey... Jennifer's coming. You better send Betsy away. <laughs> like they would yell at him. They would wow. play him, basically. Frida would actually eat his lunch. Oh. <laughs> so he never saw her face. You just see her walking away. Oh, my goodness. Her lunch. Nice. <laughs> um, and then in 1925, there's a streetcar accident. Ooh. So she's on a wooden bus. And the streetcar collides with the bus. 
the bus just explodes. Oh, goodness. There's just stuff everywhere. Um, it then runs over the passengers and drags them. Someone had, like, gold flakes for, like, a construction project or something. Mm -hmm. And the gold went everywhere and stuck to everything, especially, like, blood. And so when they found her, she was just, like, covered in blood and gold, which kind of shows up in her paintings later. Like, there's one painting where she's covered in gold. Interesting and weird at the yes. same time. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she had broken ribs. Her spine was broken a few places. She had a crushed foot. Um, was it her good foot? <laughs> it, w- it was, I think, the bad foot. Oh, all got right. crushed. Um, her collarbone was broken. Her right leg was broken in 11 places. Ooh. Her pelvis got broken. And the worst of it was uh, an iron rod went like through her pelvis and came out her vagina. Oh. That also like, explains some paintings later, yes. too. Oh. She didn't really, like, paint that exact... I guess she did some drawings in, like, her diary. That was, like, too much. Everything else kind of, like, oh, yeah. hints at it. Like, it's... Ooh. Trying to figure... Yeah, exactly. Oof. Owie. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> she was bedridden for a couple years. Couldn't be a doctor anymore. The fact that she lived is probably a yes. balls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she ended up having 32 operations over a lifetime, plates, bone grafts. One doctor would put in a plate. Another one would be like, why is that plate in there? And take it out. Oh, oh, just all kinds oh. of craziness. Um, so she's on bed rest. Her parents set up. There's nothing for her to do. Right. Before television. Um, I don't even know if they even had a radio in the house. Right. Um, so they set her up with um, a mirror on the top of her bed and an uh, easel so she could paint. Yeah. Makes sense. So she started that. painting herself. She would paint family members. Um, when she finally got off bed rest, she found Diego painting a mural, yelled at him, <laughs> and was like, hey, come down here, take a look at my paintings, tell me if they're any good or not. They're not good. I'm just not going to paint anymore. Oh. Um, wow. so, I do remember that scene from the Salma Hayek movie, yes. and I'm like, but that felt like such a contrived like movie type thing that I'm like, I wonder yeah. if that's true. All right, I like the sassiness then. All that's right. what she says. <laughs> I mean, we've got her diary, we've got their accounts, but I, I would not be surprised if she would make anything up, really. Yeah, this is yes. true. And I should trust Selma. <laughs> <laughs> um, she goes to see him about the paintings. Um, at this time, he is 20 years older than her. Yeah. They start Wait. dating. <laughs> this is not a yeah situation, uh, is it? This is like, oh, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a tomato tomato. <laughs> they uh, got married in 1929. Um, she ended up having three medically necessary abortions. Yeah. Because they were like, you you just cannot carry a baby. Right. Exactly. All your injuries, there's just no way. It's all broken in there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, she always said famously that she had suffered two accidents in her life. The streetcar and Diego Rivera. Oh. And Diego was the worst of them. Oh. Wow. Yes. Damn. <laughs> um, That's the roast. Like, you know, there are roasts and then there's that. Yeah, right. <laughs> It was just, their their whole relationship is just oh horrible. Oh. He cheats on her all the time, which I mean she knew he was an adulterer before she even right became she was involved. In grade school for her and that loud, and she knew yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean she knew, but I think she assumed that once they got married, it would stop. Sure. It, it didn't. At one point, he had her, his I think ex wife, living below them and like the apartment below him oh, and no. he would go down there for breakfast or she would come up there and make it was, it was very oh, weird man. that's cool because <laughs> and, and he didn't think it was weird he was like well she knows how i like my breakfast like oh, okay. you couldn't see how it was weird <laughs> i'd be like i don't give a crap <laughs> it's weird you um, make you or make it yourself exactly i'm sure your mom knows how you like your breakfast too but she ain't living here either yeah, <laughs> yeah. um at one point, he sleeps with her younger sister, and yeah. that oh, they get divorced after that. That is usually a lie. <laughs> um, but she has a because she's all about her her Mexican cultural heritage. Even though her father was a German immigrant, like Frida is a 
German name. I always wondered yeah. about that. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, she ends up spelling it different later. Okay. Probably about the time she changed her birth year. Ah. Um, well, there, it's reinvention. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she starts wearing the, those long, colorful skirts, the, the big headdresses with the flowers, golden jewelry. At one point, she has, like, fake teeth, I think, even made with, like... Some gold and pink diamonds in them. Oh, nuts! She's got a grill before there was grills. Mm. <laughs> but she... are grills still a thing? I don't think they are. I think I think that died. Mm, so I hope people so. Think they are? Yeah. It is not just Sorry. saying like if anyone's asking. Okay, so the, no, they're not <laughs> a thing. No one, thing. no one, no one do it. <laughs> got it. Unless you're basically playing homage to free color, <laughs> or you are free to color. Let's just go with that. Yes. <laughs> She ends up, um, Diego gets a job in San Francisco doing a mural. She goes with him, you know, before they get divorced, but, Mm -hmm. um, and she has her first exhibition of her work. I think it's a group show and it was the, in the San Francisco Society of Women Artists in 1931. She then has a pregnancy uh, because she finds a doctor there. He says, no, you, you can carry a baby. Oh. She has a horrible miscarriage mm. and just, oh, and Breaks after, her, her in another way. Uh, yeah. She, after the miscarriage asked for, um, like she wanted to like understand medically, like what exactly happened mm-hmm. and what all is going on in there. So she was asking the doctors for the books and nice. they were like, no, no, you're just a feeble woman. You, you won't understand. <sighs> I'm sure because they didn't understand what women's anatomy was. <laughs> I guess Diego was like, give her the books. She'll make some art. It'll be wonderful. <laughs> oh, this is starting to explain some of the art. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All, oh, all the things that have books. happened there are very connected with her artwork. Like, if you look at her art, you're like, oh, it's ugly and weird. So much shit has happened to this lady. Hmm. Like, She's oh. working it out in her art. Yes. <laughs> and trying to show you it in a scrapbook-like fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then at one point, her and Diego have, they get this house, but it's really two houses next to each other connected by like a roof bridge. Well, that's usually what adulterers get to stay together, <laughs> but not stay together. Yeah, <laughs> they, were, they were still marrying. And then after they got divorced, she moved out and he made her, her house, his studio, but they would continue to have like fights. They would run off. The, the bridge, she would lock him out, so he'd have to go back down through his house, <laughs> the street. They'd be fighting in the street. It's just nuts. Were they like the Mexican Elizabeth Taylor and, I don't know, pick one, uh, Richard Burton? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they would fight and give it together. and uh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> it's just nuts. Awesome. Um, he even, at one point, tried to blame her for his affair. Oh, please. Because she got homesick after they were traveling around in America doing murals. She wanted to go back. They came back to Mexico. He then, when he was having affairs in Mexico, was being like, well, it's your fault because you wanted to come back here. Uh. It's, uh, no. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That's not the way it works. <laughs> but she eventually started having her own affairs with... and. He didn't mind as long as they were with other women, uh, which is weird. Double standard. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. He he expected her to be faithful to him, but he could go and do whatever he wants. Mm. I mean, I think they both knew Classic. it was not a conventional marriage. Right. But but it was weird. But if it didn't feel fair, if it wasn't agreed upon on both parties, oh. then it's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's cool with everybody involved, then it's fine. Do what you mm. gotta do. <laughs> um, she had an affair with uh, Leo Tolstoy, stayed with them at one point, and I think he was like... 70 was or the, something? Oh, yeah, that's weird. She was like 30. He was old. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh. just at first you're like, oh, Leo Toadster. I'm sure he was just young. No, <laughs> no, he was the old man no. version. <laughs> um, oh, Frida. <laughs> she was an active member in the Communist Party. Mm-hmm. She liked to do some heavy drinking. That girl would drink you under a table. <laughs> yes. At one point, she travels to France, and guess who she meets? <gasps> Toulouse Lautrec. No, who did she meet? <laughs> one of your favorites. Really. Josephine Baker. Yes! Josephine <laughs> Baker knew everybody. Oh my God. Yeah. So <laughs> That's awesome. I need to look it up. I believe there's a picture of them. 
Really? But they met, and it's because Frida had affairs with women, yeah. and Josephine had affairs with women. Yeah, they did. Uh, we don't know oh, if they, uh, they got together. That is a lesbian porn film I would watch. <laughs> 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 that is amazing. <laughs> oh, Josephine and Frida Kahlo. Beautiful. <laughs> um, they, got, they get divorced at some point. They get remarried. Um, they decide to keep everything like... 50 50 then just like i have my finances and you have yours like it's gonna cause less problems she has her first solo exhibition of her work in mexico in 1953 she's on morphine like she just cannot make it they end up carrying her to the exhibition oh no they bring her bed and she's just laying in the bed drinking I'm sure on so many drugs. Just, just trying to get through having it. Having a good time. Right. Um, shortly after that, she gets uh, one of her legs amputated. Right. Um, she made 143 paintings, 55 of which are self-portraits. Uh, there's a quote that I paint self-portraits because I am so often alone and because I am the person that I know best. Aw. And that makes total sense, too. Yeah. 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 Especially being bedridden and everything for Mm -hmm. the longest time. Yeah. But yeah, there's the 2002 movie, Frida. I checked. It's not on Netflix right now. It used to be. It's not on who. It's on Hulu if you pay for Showtime. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um... It'll it's probably rotate like... to mm-hmm. keep an eye on it. It's worth seeing. It's been a very long time. Like, I saw it in the theater when it came out. That was the last time I saw it. Mm-hmm. Um, I need a refresh. Has there been another one? Uh, that's the only one I know of, but there is a Brooklyn museum that's going to have a Frida exhibition uh, February 8th to May 12th. Ooh. Road trip. <laughs> 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 that is fantastic. Why did she get her leg amputated? Was it for medical reasons, or she yeah. just wanted to like cut off a part of her body? She was just like done with it. <laughs> it, it was probably that it, that one that oh, had I been can make messed a leg up. Better than this one type, because she had a fake leg, right? Like, yeah that that was the one she got amputated. They have her leg somewhere. On yeah. display. Oh, I was looking it up. Like, she ha- they have the a fake leg, not the one they oh, cut okay. off. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, I thought they cut off her leg and then put no. it on display. And I was just like, oh, okay, that might be going too far. And it's like, <laughs> but decked but out. Leg. Is it? I it's like, it. Uh, yeah. like the crazy embroidery kind of looking stuff mm-hmm. on it. Oh, like henna maybe or something like that? Or... Uh, like the, the designs you would see on the Mexican shirts and skirts. It's got oh. that on it. It's pretty cool. Oh, Interesting. Mm. I do love me some Frida Kahlo. That is gross. That is, that is gorgeous is the word that I was going for. of gorgeous. painted on her boot. Gorgeous. I dressed up as Frida Kahlo for Halloween a couple of years ago. <laughs> I love that picture of you. I'm so worried about like culture appropriation, but I'm like, dude, I love women's history and I mm-hmm. love Frida Kahlo yeah. and I love her daringness of this is me deal with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm still alive and it's a miracle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you all can suck it. <laughs> yeah. As long as you're not walking around being like, I like tacos. I think right. you're fine. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's okay I was like, it's a person. Yeah. That's what I was hoping. I'm like, ask me about Frida Kahlo. You mm-hmm. know like, what I mean? I might be wrong, but if it is a specific person, you're good. But if it's a culture. Right. Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. If you dress yeah, up like an Indian. Or, right. Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. I was paying homage to history. Taco loving, <laughs> Mexican hat wearing, you know. Right. Whatever. Yes. Yeah. Tequila Anybody, drinking something. Like. <laughs> I mean, you might might offend the unibrow people, but, you know, that's okay. Yes, exactly. And I was very careful (laughs) with my unibrow. I wanted to make sure that it was not overdone, but it was delicately there. That it was, you know. Subtle and natural. (laughs) Because it's one of those things where I'm like, there are a lot of people that are like, the only thing I know about Frida Kahlo is your unibrow. And I'm like, wow, you really made an attempt there, didn't you? Yeah, right. (laughs) congratulations on your remembering her name oh my goodness yeah her story is absolutely amazing of what she went through and the way that she kind of uh processed it and it's just like i don't know her story is like somebody who just keeps getting kicked down (laughs) over and over and over again and she's like no 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 (laughs) i was looking at all those pictures while you guys were talking and it is very therapeutic what she did right like you gotta you gotta dig a little bit and keep keep going but if you do 20 minutes worth of just flipping through pictures i mean she takes all her insides out and throws Mm -hmm. it on the table 
Yeah, she had to deal with it. Now yeah. you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, Rebecca, you're a Frida Kahlo fan too, aren't you? Oh yeah, I love Frida Kahlo. See? Yeah. Dang. I was just looking her up. I was sad I missed. There was a big exhibit in Detroit a few years ago. It was her and Diego's work. And yeah. I was sad. Like a few of my friends went because they were posting pictures of it. I was like, ah, oh, dang, that'd be a good one. So all that, and they still post their works together at the same time? They're very well yeah. known together. together. Yeah, yeah, they're kind okay. of a, a pair. I mean, because they still live together for a long time, even when they weren't, mm-hmm. like, together together. And and they're, like, they kind of, they influenced each other, I think, in ways mm-hmm. that aren't necessarily known. But I think more people know about it now than they, than they would have back then. Right. I remember even um, there was a movie called The Cradle Will Rock, uh, Tim Robbins movie. Um, and it has it's uh, about Orson Welles putting on a rebellious play basically to piss off people. Um, and it's the beginning, the start of um, Orson Welles making RKO uh, right before oh. Citizen Kane and all that. Have you ever seen The Cradle Will Rock? You might uh-uh. love this, Rebecca. That's not really um, interesting. The, it's a really, it's an uh, ensemble. It has like Bill, it has like a billion people in it. Bill Murray's in it. He plays a ventriloquist and stuff. I yeah, it's like, how randomly. How have I not seen this movie? It's very much a Robert Altman, like everybody from the late 90s is in this movie. Okay. But um, Diego Rivera is in it for, I don't know, five minutes. But there's also somebody playing Frida Kahlo. Like, huh. so even if you get Diego for a few minutes represented on any medium, you also get Frida with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's like what it's about. Nelson Rockefeller yeah. commissions Mexican yes. artist Diego Rivera to play the lab, paint the lab yep. of Rockefeller Center. It's huh. a good movie. I have it on DVD. If it's if it's unavailable to find anywhere, uh, track me down. <laughs> yeah. Totally. This looks really good. Come to the it library, actually is. John Cusack's in it. Yes. Yeah. John Cusack. <laughs> Susan Sarandon. It was, yeah, everybody, like I said, Tim everybody Robbins. from the late 90s is in it. Wow. If Yeah, I mean, it feels like a Woody Allen movie, but it's not. It has a how point. Oh, I said it. Oh, wow. I just wonder how I haven't heard of this before. Yeah, there's It more. was very understated. I was living in L.A. at the time. So uh, when you live in L.A., you see all the little art house movies. So you can be the cool uh, person at the coffee shop. Yeah, I guess <laughs> and that's was, how I saw that. Yeah, late 90s. Yeah, I was in college, so I probably didn't have access to art. You were busy having a life. I was busy working yeah. at a video store. There's a difference <laughs> i had no life rebecca <laughs> no i wouldn't go that far but i was into art house movies but we just didn't have one in muncie that was like true so close or convenient unless they showed it like at the and sometimes they show stuff at the university but i don't think this would have been one so it was new probably one. not but yeah yeah Huh. But that was one of my, because that was out before Selma Hayek's movie. So, oh, yeah, January um, 20, 2000. Yeah. Okay. So that's where I kind of got a glimpse of going, oh, okay. Because, I mean, you hear about Frida Kahlo and you see her work every, you know, here yeah. and there without any context sort of thing. So I'm just like, oh, I need to get a little bit more context. And apparently the context is through Diego Rivera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I kind of feel, yeah, I feel like they're kind of a set. Like, they kind of just go hand in hand, even though they've had tumultuous history. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But you know what? They probably fueled each other is what the same time too. So Oh yeah, I think they both like the drama. Mm-hmm. That was I think that's what kept them in their same orbits or whatever for so long. Well, lovely. Well we're gonna do the let the paint dry on this cool thing while we prep a canvas for another work of art. Join us next week for another cool painting thing on Gal's Guide to the Galaxy Podcast. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gals Guide patron today. Thanks for listening. <laughs>